Panthera Africa, the Big Cat Sanctuary, all the way from Stanford, South Africa. A big thank you to Walt Disney Family Museum for inviting us to share our common mission at this year's Big Green Draw Festival. My name is Vanessa and I can't wait to tell you what we are all about here at Panthera Africa. Panthera Africa is a rescue facility for our big cats. So this means that we do not work directly in conservation. However, we do host educational visits for the public to come and learn all about not only our big cats, but conservation of the big cats. Panthera Africa was founded by two amazing women, Lizanne and Catherine, and they started with a lot of love and one big dream. Now, five years later, Panthera Africa is home to over 25 animals. Panthera Africa is a true sanctuary for all of our big cats. This means that we have no breeding, no trading, and no interaction. Our main focus is animal welfare and education. And I can't wait to educate you guys today about not only our big cats, but the issues that they face worldwide. Lions are now a threatened species. A century ago, there was over 200,000 wild lions. And today, we only see about 20,000. They've already gone extinct in 26 African countries. However, these breeding facilities are not helping the lion population to increase or have their goal in conservation at all. Breeding facilities around the world are only breeding lions for profit and for money in their pockets. We see a nasty cycle of abuse of these lions and it is unfortunately a trap for us animal lovers. While lions and lionesses are producing cubs in these breeding facilities, their cubs are usually taken away from their mothers within days to become socialized with humans. Now naturally, a lion cub has a long relationship with their mother, but the quicker the lion is used to or acclimated to humans, the better of a money-making photo prop they will be. That's right, it is very popular as a tourist attraction to have your photos taken with a young lion cub. Although this might sound tempting because lion cubs are so cute, it is never a good life or outcome for the cub. Unfortunately, we see that these cubs in many places are only legally allowed to be handled by the public for a short amount of time. So that is a lot of cubs being bred for money that can only be used for a short amount of time. So what happens when they can't be used as a photo prop anymore? Well, when they are too big to be handled by the public, they move on to their next tourist trap which is when the public can go walking with a pride of lions without a fence. The tourist is only provided with a walking stick between them and the lions. Once the walking pride of lions hits their sexual maturity or ability to produce cubs, they're typically sent right back into a breeding facility to start the process all over again. Now, if there are lions in this process that are no longer able to produce cubs, or are too aggressive to be with the public, or even if they are just absolutely beautiful, they can be sold into something called a canned hunt. A canned hunt is a legal practice where tourists can pick out a lion of their choice, pay a good amount of money, and be able to shoot that animal in a cage and take it home as their trophy. And we have to remember to make the connection that these lions are meant to be socialized to humans. So many lions don't have a natural fear of the human during the hunt. That doesn't seem fair to me. Ultimately, the lions we are cuddling are only growing up to be someone's trophy. Here at Panthera Africa, we have rescued many animals from breeding facilities like this, and there are about 300 of them in South Africa alone. And only five true sanctuaries, Panthera Africa included, really working for the welfare of these animals and educating about this legal deceit. Lions also face one more tragic issue, the bone trade. Although traditionally tiger bones are more used in the animal trade because of their ancient tie to Asian medicines, tiger bones are getting harder to produce. But with the massive numbers of lions in breeding facilities, which reach around 11 to 13,000 lions, we are now seeing lion bones in the animal trade. Here in South Africa, it is legal to hunt 800 lions a year for the bone trade alone. Now, one thing always brings me hope, and that is that animal lovers have a big voice, 
And if you believe the cycle of abuse is wrong for these lions and want to help us break the cycle, to break the chain, say no to canned hunting, say no to the bone trade, say no to photographs and petting cubs, and we may start to see the number of abused animals drop. We are so happy that Obi and Oliver were able to be taken from this horrific cycle and can now live their life in peace. Cheetahs are known for their docile nature. Unfortunately for the cheetah, humans have taken advantage of this docile behavior and have made claims that cheetahs can be domesticated. However, they can never be truly domesticated. Even when we think about our house cats and dogs, it took thousands of years to domesticate the house cat. The cheetah's wild population is also declining because of poaching, habitat loss, but also the human interference. Cheetahs are being exploited around the world and passed off as ambassador animals for teaching methods. However, regardless of how docile an animal can be, living a life not wild and free for money is not fair for that animal. And because we are more focused on keeping cheetahs in cages, on leashes, and in our homes, their wild population is being neglected and quickly dropping. Regardless of how calm an animal may seem, we always need to remember that these animals are literally built to hunt and kill, as they are carnivores. Cheetahs are the fastest land animal, reaching speeds of 98 kilometers an hour, and they are skilled hunters. Unfortunately for any animal used for human interaction needs, they need to be safe to handle for legality's sake. Unfortunately, if a cheetah decides to play too rough or have a bad day or hurt someone, they are no longer dubbed safe to be interacted with with the public. Thus, you have a throwaway animal. Unfortunately for these throwaway animals, only acting on their natural instincts they are typically put down or euthanized to make room for a more social animal. If we all put all of our time, money, and effort that we do for the captive population of cheetahs into the wild, we could do wonders for the conservation of wild cheetahs. Pima started her life exploited by the public and was then rescued and retired to a nature reserve. However, cheetahs in captivity typically only live up to about 10 years old. Pima is now 15, and this nature reserve did not have the means to take care of an elderly cheetah. We were very happy to rehome Pima to Panthera, Africa, where we can spend the time focusing on her individual needs as an elder. Shaka is one of our youngest lions at three years old. Unfortunately, even so young, Shaka was never given the chance to be a free lion because someone purchased him from the pet trade. All around the world, exotic pets have become very popular. They have certainly become a status symbol for the rich and the famous, and people who look up to these role models want to have exotic pets of their own. In the pet trade, we often see that it is the animal who ends up suffering. Depending on where you live in the world will determine what exotic pets are legal to own and how you can properly care for them. Some places have no laws or regulations surrounding the ownership of dangerous animals like lions and tigers. In Shaka's case, he was living with a family in the city of Johannesburg. Now a lion cub might not seem like much of a threat, but as you can see, Shaka is only three years old and he is big. We often see it mirrored, the problems with the exotic peck trade that we do with domestic animal shelters around the world. When people believe they can own a lion as a pet, they don't realize the money, care, and effort it takes. It also becomes a huge safety risk. And more often than not, once a lion starts to outgrow their tiny, cuddly stages of life, they become too much to handle for the pet owner and are easily discarded. Whether that means put down, sold for their bones and body parts, or sold back to a breeding facility. Panthera Africa was happy to open their doors and hearts to this young cub. We are saddened that because he was too socialized to humans and didn't learn survival skills from his mother or pride, he has no eligibility to be released into the wild. However, we are proud to give him a good home and ensure his safety from the other threats for the rest of his life.
We pride ourselves on giving our animals the best care possible. This includes proper nutrition, exercise, veterinary care, and of course, mental stimulation. Enrichment toys are fun for our cats and even for our humans. One of our favorite types of enrichment are our big cat canvas creation paintings. Using water-based, non-toxic paints, our cats love to create beautiful, one-of-a-kind works of art. We feature and sell prints of all of the cats' paintings on our website, so you too can enjoy the art of our big cats. Here you can take a sneak peek at how these beautiful works of art are made. Big Cats and Panthera Africa. You can really help Panthera Africa and our big cats by going to our website, pantheraafrica.com. There you can adopt an animal for a year and help with their enrichment costs, like these beautiful paintings, or you can even help with their food or their general care. Another big thank you for allowing us to be here and share our common mission with all of you and many other organizations towards our common goal of creating a kinder, greener and happier earth. <laughs>